a story of chandni once upon a time there lived an old man in almora he was popularly known as abu khan he lived all alone except for a few goats which he always kept as pets he gave his goats funny names such as kalua mungia or gujri he would take them out for grazing during the day and talk to them as one talks to one's own children at night he would bring them back to his little hut and put a string round the neck of each goat poor abu khan was a little unlucky in the matter of his goats very often at night one of the goats would pull and pull at the string till it broke loose and then would disappear in the hills beyond goats in hilly regions hate being tied to trees or poles they love their freedom abu khan's goats were of the best hill breed they too loved their freedom so whenever they got the chance they would run away only to get killed by an old wolf who lived in the hills whenever one of his goats disappeared abu khan was very sad he did not understand why even the juiciest grass and grains that he gave them and all the love that he showered on them would not stop these unfortunate goats from running straight into the jaws of death are these goats mad he wondered or was it their love for freedom but freedom meant struggle hardship even death abu khan couldn't solve the mystery one day when all his goats left him abu khan said to himself no more goats in my house ever again i may yet live for a few more years but i will live without goats however the poor old man was terribly lonely he simply couldn't do without his pets very soon he bought a young goat he thought a young goat will stay with me much longer she will soon begin to love me as well as the food i give her every day she will never want to go to the hills and he laughed with joy the new goat was very pretty she was white as snow and had two little horns on her little head and a pair of gleaming red eyes she had a friendly temperament and would listen to abu khan's tales with a lot of interest and affection abu khan called her chandni which means moonlight he loved chandni and would narrate to her stories of all his friends who were dead and gone several years passed chandni was still there abu khan believed that chandni would never leave his compound excuse me abu khan believed that chandni would never leave his compound for the free and fresh air of the hills beyond alas he was mistaken again every morning chandni watched the hilltops bathed in the sunlight how beautiful those hills are she thought how refreshing the breeze that blows through them and how lovely to run across those green fields she ran towards the hills but had to stop with a jerk the rope round her neck wouldn't let her go any further how she hated that rope she stopped eating the green grass abu khan brought for her nor did she listen to his stories with interest and affection she lost her appetite grew very thin and stared moodily 
at the hilltops bathed in sunlight. Abu Khan did not understand Chandni's anguish. At last, she decided to speak to him frankly. Dear Abu Khan, she said, let me go to the hills, please. If I stay in your compound, I will die. Now Abu Khan understood Chandni's problem, but it made him very unhappy. The earthen pot which contained Chandni's breakfast fell from his hands and broke into a thousand pieces. Why do you want to leave me, Chandni? Abu Khan asked. I want to go to the hills. Chandni answered. Don't you like the food here? I'll give you tastier food and a much longer rope. No, thank you. Let me go to the hills. Do you realize the risk you are running, you obstinate creature? There is a dangerous wolf in the hills. He will eat you up. Abu Khan did his best to warn her. Chandani answered, God has given me a pair of horns. I will fight the wolf. Fight the wolf? Indeed. Have you forgotten the story of your sister Kalwa, who was the size of a big deer? She fought the wolf through the night but was killed in the morning. Abu Khan narrated Kalwa's story for the 50th time. To all this, Chani had only one thing to say. I want to go to the hills. Abu Khan got very annoyed. He thundered. You are not going anywhere. From today, you will live in a small hut and not move freely in the compound. Ungrateful as you are, you must still be saved from the wolf. He pushed her into a small hut and shut the door. But he forgot to close a small window at the back. The same night, Chandni made that window her passage to freedom. Chandni reached the hills. It seemed to her that the old hills were standing in a row to welcome her. She felt like a child meeting her parents after years of separation. The tall grass rose to embrace her. The flowers bloomed to amuse her and the wind sang an endless song of welcome. How different all this was from a past in the prison house of Abakan's compound. It was the happiest day in Chandani's life. That day, she played for hours on the grassy slopes of the hills. She met a herd of wo- excuse me. She met a herd of wild goats who asked her to join their group. But Chandani politely refused. She wanted to enjoy her new freedom all by herself. The sun disappeared behind the hills, and soon darkness enveloped the grass the flowers and the trees. The wind stopped blowing and there was stillness all around except for a strange sound which was coming from the bushes. The sound was like a grunt. What was it? It wasn't Abu Khan's voice calling her back to the compound nor was it the voice of another goat. Then Chani thought of the dangerous wolf who lived in the hills. She felt scared. Should she go back to the safety of Abu Khan's hut? No, she said to herself. Death in an open field is far better than life in a small hut. The wolf had come out of the bushes and was staring greedily at Chandani. His eyes were shining like burning coals in the darkness. He seemed in no hurry. He knew the new goat was his. The wolf and the goat sized up each other. The wolf was big and ferocious, whereas the goat, though healthy, was small. But small is not weak. Chandni stood firm on her legs. 
head slightly bent and horns jutting out. She was a picture of courage. She looked like a brave soldier ready to fight a tetch trip, excuse me. She looked like a brave soldier ready to fight a treacherous enemy. I must put up a good fight, Chandani thought. Success or failure is a matter of luck or chance. The fight began. It went on through the night. The moon, which had been watching the fight, began to grow pale and suddenly hid behind the clouds. The stars also began to disappear one by one. A faint light appeared in the east and the morning call for prayer came from a distant mosque. The first rays of the sun saw Chandani lying on the ground. She was completely soaked in blood. The wolf, tired and sleepy, was getting ready to devour her. An assembly of birds perched on top of a tree nearby was debating the result of the fight. Who is the winner? One of them asked. The wolf, of course, most of them said. A wise old bird declaimed with confidence, Chandini is the winner.